It won't be long before we're redrawing the world map, because we're in for a hell of a lot of sea level rise. It won't be tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, or even next year. But it's coming. Four highly respected polar scientists published a paper recently with a pretty dire message. They brought together various strands of evidence, including satellite data, modelling, and ancient climate or paleoclimate records, to show that even the incredibly optimistic climate target of 1.5 degrees Celsius will result in sea level rise that we cannot adapt to. If you're watching this, chances are that you know that we'll speed past one and a half degrees in no time at all. At current rates will be there within the next 20 years. These researchers say that even current warming, which sits at 1.2 or 1.3 degrees, will cause extensive loss and damage across the world. According to them, the only safe amount of warming is one degree Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures, a level that we've blown right past and which is rapidly disappearing in the rearview mirror. So far, so depressing. In fact, it's taken me quite a while to get this video out because it made me feel… stuff. But although the outlook is pretty bleak, it doesn't mean climate action is futile. And there are some important nuances in there that I think you'll want to hear about. So, come on, give me a hand. Let's dive in. This message is actually not new. For instance, I made a video with a similar idea in 2023, but it's a knockout conclusion with punchy delivery from some heavyweights of ice sheet science. Sea levels are currently around 25 centimeters higher than they were in 1880, and the speed at which the oceans are rising has doubled during my lifetime. In the year I was born, sea level was creeping up by 2.1 millimeters per year, but last year it was rising at 4.5 millimeters. Like lots of change in the climate system, sea level rise is accelerating, and by the end of the century, the rate of change could double again to 10 millimeters per year. Talking about millimetres of change per year makes it sound really insignificant, but over many decades, those millimetres really do add up. And during storms and floods, seas can rise much further, inundating coasts and causing severe damage. Sea level rise is a slow burner. Ice sheets take a long time to respond to changes in climate, which means that we're mostly talking about long-term sea level rise. You know, the kind of sea level rise that will be happening long after anyone alive today is gone. But it doesn't mean that this won't matter for you and me. In the next 25 years, just 20 centimeters of additional sea level rise will cost around 1 trillion US dollars per year in flood damages across the world's largest coastal cities. That's a mind-boggling number. And over many centuries, even in the most optimistic visions of the future, where we cut emissions drastically well below our current ones, we'll get sea level rise of over six and a half meters. The implication is that it doesn't really matter how much we cut emissions now, and we all know that we're not cutting emissions dramatically enough or fast enough. Huge amounts of sea level rise are inevitable, regardless on the multi-century timescale. The only thing that we can really control is how fast it happens. These scientists come at this problem from an adaptation perspective. 230 million people live within one meter of sea level and one billion within 10 meters of sea level. So when all of those people have to move to avoid the ramping risks, we'll have a serious crisis on our hands. The quicker and more dramatically sea level rises, the harder it is to plan for that change. Moving settlements, infrastructure and people isn't easy after all, and deciding what we can afford to lose is also a very difficult decision. But if decision makers have more time to consider the options, then you'd hope that they'd make better decisions. So the rate of change is what really matters. The faster seas rise, the harder it is to adapt to that change. As you've heard, the seas are rising at around half a centimeter per year, and that rate is accelerating. These researchers say that something around one centimeter per year, or roughly twice the current rates, is too fast to adapt to. The thing is, the way we're going, we'll see those rates within the next 75 years. So although coastline changing amounts of sea level rise are locked in, it doesn't mean action is futile. Every fraction of a degree matters for ice sheets too, because less warming means less rapid change, which buys us time to adapt and means less damaging effects. The sooner we slow or stop warming, the easier it will be to return to safety. You might be wondering how they came to this dire conclusion. 
These researchers used a combination of techniques, including modern satellite data, modeling, and paleoclimate evidence. We can use past warm periods deep in Earth's climate history as indicators of what might happen now as we heat the planet. Previous warm periods, including the catchily named Marine Isotope Stage 5e around 130,000 years ago, had lower temperatures and carbon dioxide concentrations than today, and sea levels between 2 and 9 meters higher. Another period, even further back in time, around 3 million years ago, had CO2 concentrations similar to today, with temperatures of between 2 and 5 degrees above pre-industrial, and sea levels 10 to 20 meters higher than present. Evidence suggests that the Greenland, West Antarctic, and large parts of the East Antarctic ice sheets all disappeared during this time. So, paleo evidence shows that current levels of warming, and certainly the levels of warming that are expected by the end of this century or sooner, are enough to cause very large amounts of sea level rise. That's partly due to incremental temperature rise, and partly because these levels of warming can trigger irreversible change by initiating tipping points. And model evidence, which is independent from this paleoclimate record, also shows very similar results. Scientists have tried to narrow down that range of temperatures that can push different systems beyond the point of no return. And the threshold for the two most vulnerable ice sheets, the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, are thought to be around about one and a half degrees Celsius, a level of warming that we are rapidly approaching. Some researchers even speculate that we have already passed the tipping threshold for these two important ice sheets. The Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets combined would contribute around 12 meters to sea level over many centuries. But if we blew past the threshold for East Antarctica, which likely sits somewhere between two and three degrees above pre-industrial temperatures, we'd see tens of meters more of sea level rise over the next thousand years or so. Now, I'm going to pause here and say that this feels like quite a lot, like big time existential dread inducing. And in fact, that's why it's taken me longer than I'd hoped to make this video. It feels like there's a real disconnect between what scientists are saying and have been saying for a long time on the one hand, including some of the very big names who wrote this paper, and then what we actually see happening politically and in wider society. And I think the slow but inevitable nature of this particular kind of change is one of the reasons for that. We are basically watching a car crash happen in hyper slow motion, but it's also because the problem feels too big and scary. Like, I don't know what it's like for you, but I often feel very overwhelmed by the scale of what's happening and also the scale of what needs to be done. Plus, sea level rise, whether it's inevitable or not, feels much less pressing than other issues that, you know, the effects of natural disasters leveling your home or the cost of living preventing you from feeding your kids or state-sponsored genocide eradicating your entire country. But the reality is climate disruption is a threat multiplier and makes all of those things worse, as well as raising sea levels. My only advice to myself, as much as to you, is to try and focus on the things that you actually can control. Do what you can in your sphere of influence, whether that's planting trees or writing to your MP or, I don't know, delocking yourself to airports. All of these actions are important to turn up the heat on politicians and bring temperatures down. Because the implication of the safe level for ice sheets being near one degree Celsius is that we have to reduce temperatures. Not stabilize them, reduce them. To do that will require first net zero emissions and then net negative ones. So that implies big time rollout of carbon negative technologies, as well as the drastic reduction of emissions from all sectors, which feels, you know, pretty impossible. 1.5 degree scenarios already assume huge amounts of carbon negative tech, but to reach one degree will require a whole nother level of intervention. These scientists say that more research is needed to nail down the real safe value, as well as important questions of how long can we remain above the safe level without incurring even more significant damages, and how the heck we even get to one degree in the first place. But although there are still a lot of details we aren't sure about, it is abundantly clear that cutting emissions is a very 
very important first task. No matter what we do, warming we've already brought about will result in sea level rise of tens of meters over hundreds to thousands of years. But there's time to make things less bad and action can make the transition less destructive. Action simply buys us time to adapt. But sea level rise is only part of the story. The climate crisis has other more short-term impacts too. Every fraction of a degree matters. Every action to reduce temperatures will have real effects on people's lives, reducing the incidence of deadly heat waves, deadly droughts, fires, storms and floods, as well as, of course, slowing the rate of sea level rise. We know what we need to do. We know how to do it. We just gotta, well, do it. I make these videos with the help of my fantastic supporters over on Patreon. If you like what you see, then please like, subscribe, share, comment, and all of that good stuff. But if you feel like going the extra mile, then please do consider joining my Patreon gang via the link over here. It really helps keep this work independent. Next, watch this one where I dive into what will happen to the polar ice sheets at one and a half and two degrees with Dr. James Kirkham from the International Cryosphere Climate Initiative. See you there.